one thing that will definitely improve your relationships. Allow the pilot to pilot the operations and the co-pilot to follow the lead. For all the listeners out there, think about how many times you've gone docile in an environment when you should be the one with the ball, for lack of better phrasing. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, number 1177, What Feelings Do the Holidays Bring Out for You? We got a lot of really, really good questions and a lot of good feedback on that in the private Facebook group today. For episode number 1178, one thing that will definitely improve your relationships, not only intimate relationships, but I would say friends, family, coworkers, whatever it may be. So this is a good story, Alan, because two, three, four years ago, it would not have gone exactly the way it went. So I think we mentioned this in one of our previous episodes. I don't know. Everything's just kind of melting together at this point. When Alan and I were in Toronto... The day, the, not the day we got there, but the next day we woke up and it was Monday and we said, all right, we got to do seven episodes today. We have to go to the gym. We have to prep for Evan Carmichael and we have to find a way to get all of our work done and get R&R tonight before Evan Carmichael. Cause the day we interviewed Evan Carmichael, we were driving home 10 hours and it was going to be like a 24 hour day for us really. And very quickly, my alarm bells inside of my brain start ringing. And I said, Alan, we are Jeff. There's no way we're going to get all this done. He's like, no, nah, hey, we're fine. <laughs> we're fine. Don't even worry about it. I said, I, Alan. I, I, hey, hey, I was kind of being playful because oh. I think I kind of knew too. But yeah. Well, for, yeah. for the purpose of this, let's pretend you didn't know. No, but the, the truth is, is that I, I wanted to believe otherwise. Okay. But I think I kind of know at this stage when you say that, that you actually are joking, but you're also, (laughs) there's truth in it. Oh, I was very Many truths are said in jest. That's the quote. Yeah. Uh, Meaning when you're playful and joking, it means there's some truth, which the best jokes have some truth. Isn't it in jest? Yeah, that. Sorry. In jest. Okay. Because I was thinking. Strong work. Jester (laughs) is a joker. Jest. Yes. There's levels to this. Strong so, work. <laughs> Strong now that Alan has taken, <laughs> taken us off the rails, let's just say for the purpose of this, Alan didn't believe me and I was steadfast in my beliefs. So I said, Alan, we're Jeff. This is, it's not going to, it's not, it's not possible. There's not enough time to do everything we have to do. Not in the order we want to do it. I said, we're not going to finish till 10 PM, son. We are in trouble. And he's like, all right, all right, let's, let's talk about it. And I said, okay, I think we need to go to the gym now. We need to come back, we need to eat, we need to do the episodes, and then we'll kind of go from there. Evan will be last thing tonight or first thing tomorrow. Alan agreed with me, we pivoted the day, and we ended up finishing at exactly 10 o'clock. You FaceTimed Emilia, I did a little little bit of content, and it actually went pretty much exactly like I had planned. Now, the beautiful thing about this story is Alan let me be the pilot when uh, when it came to logistics. So this episode... One thing that will definitely improve your relationships. Allow the pilot to pilot the operations and the co-pilot to follow the lead. So when it comes to business, Alan is the pilot. I am the co-pilot, I follow his lead. When it comes to logistics, I am the pilot and Alan is the co-pilot. When it comes to naming the episodes, I'm the pilot. But this is the interesting thing. If we didn't both understand that, Every time something came up, there'd be some sort of ego bonking, there would be an argument, there would be a break in rapport, there would be us getting mad at each other, and that has happened in the past, right? We've really worked through this over the last however many years, but this is something you can take away from this episode, and you could literally bring this to your partner or bring this to one of your friends and say, hey, I think there's times where you and I are both trying to be the pilot, when in reality... I have more time flying that plane, just in this analogy, or you have more time driving that vehicle. You should be the one who leads the charge here. I should be the one who leads the charge when we're doing this. A great exercise, a great awareness, and I would say a great opportunity for you to improve your relationships. So uh, the person with the highest awareness and the highest capabilities in any, any given arena should be the leader. But that's not always how it works. 
And if you think about the person who sincerely and genuinely is the best basketball player on the court or is the best shooter, for example, they should get the ball when, when you know, it's time to shoot at the, at the end for the game-winning shot. But that doesn't always happen because egos get involved. And ego in this analogy is an identity that's inaccurate of self. So I, I define arrogance and actually, Kev, we're doing a Relationship Talks virtual event on this on Thursday. And it's how to not fight in your relationship. Emilia and I, we talk about how we're three years in and we've never fought. We've never stormed out, never raised our voice, none of that. And it's honestly mostly because of her, but it's also because of these other things that we've done behind the scenes. Now, we've had heated, uh, passionate discussions at times. And usually it's when there's this situation happening. When the pilot and the co-pilot are in the wrong role at the wrong time. And so the fifth, we have these five reasons why, why couples fight. And the fifth one is arrogance. And by arrogance, what it means is, is low confidence, or no, low awareness, low competence, but high confidence. In that moment, let's say, so Kevin was a foreman for a construction company, and he used to have to do the logistics of all these different jobs. And so logistics is definitely something that you've failed forward with much better than me, okay? Just like I was in corporate business, all that stuff. So if I had an ego and I was arrogant, I would think that I know better than Kevin in that moment. And I would say, no, 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 we're totally fine. Don't even worry about it. No big deal. We're totally fine. And I said that jokingly, but I kind of knew on some level that you knew we were, we were Jeffed, but you also said it jokingly too. But here's my point. If Emilia and I have ever had a disagreement, it's only ever been under these one, this one circumstance. Either I was the teacher when I should have been the student or she was the teacher when she should have been the student. Whenever the teacher and student pilot co-pilot is off, the team loses. Imagine the worst shooter in the league taking the game-winning shot because of their ego and they think they should get the ball. That's, yeah, okay, maybe one in a hundred times you win, but most 99 times out of 100, the whole team suffers and loses the game because of your ego. And so for all the listeners out there, think about how many times you've gone docile in an environment when you should be the one with the ball, for lack of better phrasing, or how many times you've taken the ball when you should have passed the ball to someone who's more capable or more aware or who who could do a better job than you. And I think that self-awareness plus awareness of other people is the important piece here. If you have high self-awareness of where you're really at in a given context, in a given arena, you can take the student role when it's appropriate and you can take the leadership role when it's ap- appropriate. And another analogy I use is like, can you pass me the baton? So Kev, okay, so now we're going to talk business. Okay, pass me the baton. Okay, we're going to talk about titling the podcast episodes. Okay, give the baton back to Kevin. And I think we've gotten a really good, we've gotten really good at that, honestly. Uh, but that's also through massive years of just kind of realizing this over time. I don't want to say massive pain and failure because you and I very rarely got in those tough arguments, but there have been a couple notable ones that that were pretty bad. And then we both were, ended up realizing later on like, oh, okay, so Kevin was more accurate in his thinking than me there. And oh, Alan was more accurate in his thinking. Uh, I had one notable episode early on where I swore quite a bit. Uh, we were interviewing a couple people that did a lot of swearing and, and I swore more than usual. And Kevin was like, yeah, you just, you swore more on that episode. I was like, no, I don't think so. And it was just one of those ego bonking moments of like, I I doubt it's as bad as you think, but it's definitely better than I think. And so that's what it is, is, is a drive to five. That's what we're talking about here. The pilot and the co-pilot need to be in the right seat at the right time to make sure the plane is landing safely. And I think that if you and your friends, you and your family, you and your partner are clear on that while also allowing it to evolve, you're going to be much better off. Hey guys, it's Alex Ramos and I am happy that I was in group coaching for a second time. Um, It definitely helps to have accountability. I'm happy that I invested in this because it was investing in me and Even better, I get to meet people that are doing the same exact thing to help themselves. And I need friends and close people around me like that, you know? So, yeah, I really appreciated being in group coaching because of the accountability and because of me. 
and this is where things can get really wonky in the beginning of your journey as a dream chaser because it's weird. There's this weird thing, but in the beginning, you're not going to have any results, but it doesn't mean your awareness isn't higher than everybody else's, not everybody else's, but everybody in your circle. I know for you and I, we got so much terrible advice in the beginning of, Oh no, do this with your podcast, do this with your podcast. It wasn't based on the fact that people were trying to sabotage us or anything. They just assumed their awareness was as high as ours. Just because we don't have results doesn't mean our awareness isn't high yet. Right. And that's the interesting thing is I do think at times we let other people drive, but there's also been times where we kind of reset the relationship of like, Hey, we're the, the we are the pilot here. Just so you know, there was yeah. a, a, a time where we, we were in a group setting and somebody was somebody who has always treated us a little bit weird said, Oh, you guys do seven episodes a week. That's too much content. Like there's, that's, isn't that too much content? Like, isn't there any such thing as too much content? Are you all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alan did the eye thing that he does sometimes. So I'm going to, I'm going to try my to contact, stop. My I'm going to stop calling it out, but it's, it just <laughs> catches my, it catches my attention. I don't even know that I'm doing it. These lights are very bright. Although apparently they're not bright enough. No, they're not. No, they're not bright enough. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I remember you in that situation, you reset the relationship with that person. You're like, no, it's, there's no such thing as too much content. Like I did? Yeah. Go me. Not as good as you would today, but you leaned into it for sure. I didn't know I didn't know that how important this is. I seriously didn't understand how important this is. That it's very important for the for the teacher to be the teacher and to stay the teacher in a certain context. Because if you if you shift that subconsciously there's a there's a dynamic shift in the relationship. And Emilia and I did an episode on the Conscious Couples podcast, Kev, of who wears the pants in your relationship, something like that. And essentially, it was on this topic of, because people have asked us that, like, who wears the pants in your relationship with Emilia? It's like, honestly, I honestly don't know. I know that it's her sometimes and it's me sometimes. It really depends on the context. I coach her and Bianca at Evolve Ventures, right? And that's great. But she also knows way more than me about a lot of things. And so... We have a housekeeper now. We're very grateful for that. And she speaks Portuguese. And Emilia speaks Portuguese. You better believe I'm, pi- I'm co-pilot. I don't speak Portuguese. So I was, just, I was just observing. It was great. It was great. It's very important to be aware enough to know when... Because at the end of the day... And here's the, really, the, the takeaway that I want to really land. When the goal is what's best for everyone, that's when the egos go away. Because if the goal is to make sure Kevin is heard or Alan is heard, and and this is the interesting thing on this episode too, Kevin and I's objective, whether it's conscious or subconscious, of this podcast episode is to have it be the most valuable episode possible. It's not to make sure I feel heard. It's not to make sure Kevin feels heard. If that was the case, we'd be fighting on these mics. Instead, we're constantly okay, Kevin has a good point there. He's going to tell the story. Okay, now I understand this at this level. Okay, let me talk. And I think that's why you never see two people on a stage. You and I did something. Dude, have you ever seen two people on a stage like that? I'm sure I probably have. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. It's super rare. I know that. And I think this is why. I think there always has to be one pilot and one co-pilot and it's hard to shift that dynamic in real time. Well, so, you and I just have so many. I mean, we have a thousand, let's just say, eleven 1, hundred episodes of that. I know, and it's got. It used to be harder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely used to interrupt me too often. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but for <laughs> for <laughs> but yeah, I, for sure. I think that to your point, our intentions have changed. I think it's almost like. I don't know. At the end of the day, the the ultimate goal is to deliver value. And if I'm interrupting you when you're trying to deliver value, there's no way the value is going to get delivered. Even if I, I don't think what you're saying is super valuable, I'm not saying that's the case, but <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically, of course. <laughs> hypothetically. Uh, me interrupting you doesn't make it better. It makes it worse. Mm-hmm. And it prolongs the episode. It's just not... But I do think you and I are really good at this. I really do. To, to pat us on the back. And we've had many people say, hey, being business partners is the dumbest shit ever. Pardon my French. And it's like, no, it's dumb for you because you have an ego. 
Like, yeah. we're going to be fine. I'm not worried about that. We want the same thing. We want to bring holistic self-improvement to the masses. That's the thing. That's what we're doing here. It's not, I don't care if I get a plaque that says CFO Kevin or CEO Kevin. I don't care. I didn't even know what that <laughs> meant five years ago, so I'm not too worried about it. But I do. Which is it, why you're not CEO. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. That's, it's funny. that's funny, funny how that works. But that really is, an, that's an important thing. Where is your ego not allowing you to be yeah. the student when it would be the most beneficial for you to be the student? Mm-hmm. Anything that's to, fire. Any you want to respond at all? Anything? You have? <laughs> Anything to add? He goes, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kevin and I yesterday redesigned the entire business model of NLU. It, yeah. We essentially took his podcast, which is, I guess, in a way, our podcast. But you know what I'm saying? Oh. Podcast Growth University. If you've never listened to it, check that out. We took that entire business model. And by the way, Emilia asked me. She's like, "Well, why didn't you do that earlier?" And I, I was like, "That's a great question." Because I wasn't sure how far Kevin wanted to go with that. Oh. Genuinely. And now you that I know that you want to... Well, now no, that I know you want to do monthly meetups and all kinds of stuff in the future. I don't want to. Future. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> really. I just know it's but that's necessary. that's what's best for the world. Yeah, that's what's yes. best for, for impact. So essentially what we did is we took NLU and infused Podcast Growth You into it. So it's really awesome now. But if I'm cooked today, yes. that is why. That is why. And I mean, shout out to, you know, shout out to Podcast Growth You. It's exponential in growth. It is. So that's pretty cool. You know, it's good growth rate. I've started two podcasts from the ground up. And this one, this Podcast Growth You is doing far better than the other one did. <laughs> so that's saying something. <laughs> Next level you and Podcast Growth You. Anything in closing, Jeff? I know, yeah, to, just to Alan's point, we uh, last night, yesterday was a heavy, heavy. We were together from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Just redesigning the business entirely Everything. like cutting things also just a friend we haven't even said this anywhere so nobody knows we're not going to do the live podcast in the private facebook group like we did what we're going to do is we're just going to do so we did two episodes we would do the live podcast and then we do a q a what we're going to do is we are going to set up a way, whether it's on the website, in the beginning it'll be, you can DM us, send us emails, whatever. You can put it in the private Facebook group. We'll take questions from the community. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a Q&A every week where we literally just go through the questions that we have. We'll have a giant list of them. We'll choose the ones that we think are the most topical or the most valuable for that week and then we're going to do that so every week we're going to do a q a it's just not going to be live in the facebook group and then the other episode will just be another one like we're doing right now and we will only ever use first names or just keep it anonymous yes. i think we should probably use first names but uh either way good call either way Anything i leave else? that to you kev this is your department you can first pilot name. that and i'll be the co-pilot i think first name is uh i think first name is good depending on We'll figure it out. No matter what, we will make the decision that makes you the most anonymous possible so you feel safe. That's our, our ultimate goal. Just like when we share DMs or anything, we never say, we're always reverse engineering. Look, if you can say Jeff, there's a lot of Jeffs, but if there's if your name is like super specific, maybe we won't use that. Right. You dig it? I dig it. Next level nation, we are coming up on the middle of December, which is truly mind-blowing, which means there are only, if you're listening to this episode, maybe three weeks left of 2022. And we're actually going to be doing an episode on this Friday, Did This Year Go the Way You Wanted? I think that's going to be a really awesome episode to do. But now that we're nearing the end of this year, maybe you have regrets. I'm sure you have celebrations, which I'm very grateful for. But make sure next year is at least as good, but hopefully better, than this year. One way to do that is with group coaching. We are starting our ninth round on January 3rd. Maybe you have listened to the podcast for a while and you say, you know what? I'm taking a lot of value from this, but I'm ready for the next step. That's exactly what group coaching is for. You do not have to be a business owner. You do not have to be an entrepreneur. You don't have to be in a relationship. You don't even have to have any experience tracking your habits. We will make it very, very simple for you. And we will make sure that you get results no matter where you are in your journey. Everything you need to know is in the show notes below. The Next Level blog is officially launched and on the website. Click the link in the show notes. It is currently, it has two different articles that I've written. One is quantum goal setting, which will help you achieve your goals. The second is how to fail your way to success. I didn't change the title. Uh, So it's actually technically micro failure for macro success, but I'm considering changing the title to how to fail your way to success, which really is what it's about. 
what is this whole deal with success versus failure? I thought the point of success was not to fail, when in reality it's actually the exact opposite, which is why many people stay stuck. They would rather not fail forward. They would rather not look bad. They would rather be successful out of the gate, which doesn't exist. So that article, I can promise you either one of those articles, you will walk away with a different understanding that without a question will help you achieve your goals at a higher level. That's my promise to you is they will help you understand how and why goal achievement is so difficult so that you can actually do it successfully. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 1,179, last week's live Q&A, and the final live Q&A, what if I don't want to spend time, or sorry, what if I don't want to spend the holidays with certain family members? I know that the holidays are a time for many of us where all of our families come together and we see people that we don't see that often, and honestly, people that we might not want to see. So we talk about that in the Q&A. As always, we love you, we appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans, we have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. See you at the next level.